So in this video we're going to be talking about how the peace broke down and the Greeks ended up in the most catastrophic war in their history. So here's a quick recap of the 5th century timeline. Remember that all this is happening in rapid succession and in concert with each other. So the, the classical era, and especially the 5th century, is things happening on top of each other, socially, politically, militarily, culturally, uh, in, in every aspect of the Greek world. Everything is coming to a climax. Everything is coming to conflict. Everything is, is, is developing uh, 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 in unexpected and unprecedented ways. A lot of this has to do with uh, the uh, the turning point of the Persian invasions, uh, uh, which uh, which not only bring the Greeks together, but uh, uh, also create the condition of there being a alternative hegemon for the Greek world. Um, it it brings Athens, which was already a uh, the 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 cultural leader and, and uh, social leader of the Greek world, into a position to be a alternative military leader as well. Uh, especially as the Spartans step back when there is a need to uh, make the war aggressive, to take the war to the Persians, and so the uh, the founding of the Delian League after the invasion of Xerxes. Uh, uh, changes the game and, uh, and and pushes us down the path toward the the polarization of the Greek world after the Persian invasions more and more there's a uh, there's a sense that you are either a friend of Athens or a friend of Sparta and this has to do with the 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 political situation it has to do with uh, uh, with uh, the the uh, the the radical uh, diametrically opposed ideologies of of, uh, of Athens and Sparta, and so we have this long brewing problem, uh, this long term uh, tension that is building up in 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 the, in the Greek world, and it has a great deal to do with not only the you know these opposing pursuits, these opposing ideas of the ideal society that Athens and Sparta have that ultimately each side thinks is 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 a dangerous influence on the rest of the Greek world but also uh, we have the uh, the the increasing identification of Athens with the demos and Sparta with the aristoi and so uh, the Athens and Sparta come to represent the two sides of Greek society that's present in every single uh, uh, every single polis. Uh, the, the the tension that, that drives the entire Greek world is the tension that's present uh, in the polis itself from its very origins at the end of the Dark Age, and so uh, this builds to uh, to. Uh, to the point where it bursts out in uh, a series of conflicts, first the undeclared war, uh, and then uh, the interim of the Thirty Years' Peace, and then the Peloponnesian War itself. Uh, and uh, the Peloponnesian War, in turn, uh, takes place in a number of stages. It's divided in half by the, the temporary truce of the Peace of Nicias uh, and uh, the the uh, escalation of the war through the Athenian uh, efforts to take Sicily. And so uh, the, uh, the, 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 this is a series of, of, of conflicts, a series of, of highs and lows that each stage ratchets up the tension, ratchets up the polarization, uh, further divides the, the Greek world until uh, more and more mental energy is being expended on this. Uh, more and more there's a sense that there needs to be a, uh, a, a, an explosion to, to resolve this in some way. And, and, and as the Peloponnesian War breaks out, more and more uh, it becomes expected that there is going to be a conflict for who is going to be the hegemon. Uh, the, the fact that, that the Greek polis is supposed to be independent and autonomous, and, and there isn't supposed to be a, a, an overarching leader, that there isn't supposed to be a, a, 
a, a polis that's stronger and, and dominates all the others. The, the the very idea of the polis is that each one stands shoulder to shoulder, you know, like the hoplites and the phalanx. Uh, there isn't supposed to be a hero in, in the battlefront, and, and there isn't uh, supposed to be a, a dominant polis, but... Uh, the the conflict that takes place in the second half of the of the fifth century, and especially the Peloponnesian War itself, is is a, is is you know uh, uh, generations that become conditioned to accepting that this is something that uh, that this is that this rivalry is expected, that this conflict is is understandable, and that uh, that that the the battle for hegemony is. Is, uh, is 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 rational. So, uh, where does this leave us in terms of, of how these uh, play out? Uh, the undeclared war, uh, you know, essentially ends in a draw, uh, and the main result is to um, is to calcify the polarization of the Greek world. The undeclared war produces the uh, uh, the. The, the full divide of the Greek world into us and them, and uh, and more and more this means that uh, this becomes uh, a fixed part of the of of, uh, of the Greek understanding of of the world around them. The thirty years play, years peace just to uh, cements this in place. And so the thirty years peace, the provisions of which are all about ensuring that each alliance becomes you know uh, you know the the uh, you know uh, an us or them a a a binary division of of the Greek world uh, a, a a perpetuation of a cold war uh, a a you know a facing off of of superpowers however you want to think of it uh, but uh, the uh, this ensures that uh, the 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 two sides the Athenian alliance and the Peloponnesian alliance become more hostile, more dangerous, more violent uh, within their own alliances, and and makes the outbreak of war inevitable. This uh, this thirty years peace is uh, doesn't solve anything at all. On the contrary, uh, it it heightens the tension and and makes war between uh, Sparta and Athens inevitable. Uh, but here's the thing. So we have this long-term conflict between Sparta and Athens, but all of the flashpoints, all of the actual catalysts for the outbreak of the Peloponnesian War, as with the Undeclared War, uh, have to do with Athenian trade expansion uh, and the, the trade rivalry between Athens and Corinth. And so... Uh, during the uh, during the, uh, the the thirty years so-called thirty years peace, which remember only lasts for fifteen years, uh, the during the thirty years peace we have uh, a, a Athens becoming even more aggressive in in, in its in developing a commercial empire uh, in direct uh, provocation of Corinth, uh, and uh, this takes the form of the establishment of. Of uh, a string of new colonies in, in very important commercially strategic places, uh, in particular in the Black Sea, and uh, here, as we see in the north of the Aegean, that gives uh, them direct access to the uh, the, the rich and vital uh, raw materials, natural resources of Thrace, and uh, the you know the the Scythian steppes to the north, uh, and these new colonies are frequently. Uh, Clerakes, which are the special kind of colony that uh, that uh, in which the colony does not become independent but becomes an extension of Athens, uh, and then we have a succession of, uh, of 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 conflicts that lead us directly into the war. All of them involving Athens, of course, uh, and Corinth. So the first of these involves uh, Corcyra. Corcyra is an important uh, colony of Corinth. It is uh, strategically located for the uh, trade routes of the west in the Adriatic, on the western coast, uh, off the western coast of the, the Greek mainland. Uh, and uh, the Corcyrans uh, are, uh, to a certain extent, unusual in that the way the Corinth has treated them has led them into rebellion and hostility against their own mother city. The, uh, the, the typical Greek colony is supposed to be 
uh, independent, but also to have a special relationship with his mother city, uh, especially in terms of trade. And uh, you know, the mother city is supposed to intervene in times of uh, of crisis in, in in any of its colonies and provide uh, new leadership and so forth. And so Corkira is uh, is unusual in that it has uh, resisted uh, the relationship with Corinth, and uh, this has gotten worse and worse until it gets to the point where uh, Corkira is expecting uh, outright uh, military hostility from Corinth. They're expecting Corinth to come in its ships and uh, take Corkira uh, back into the fold by force. So Corkira uh, needs help against this, uh, this great power. Uh, uh, and the problem is that uh, by this point, the, uh, the Greek world is divided, us and them. Uh, there's only two possibilities to turn to for help. One is Sparta, and the other is Athens. And uh, Sparta won't help because Sparta is is uh, closely allied with Corinth. And so Corkira, having no other options, forges a alliance with Athens. Athens isn't particularly happy about it either, but uh, but uh, in this case, they agree to the alliance and eventually end up sending a fleet of ships to the naval battle with Corkira, uh, in which the Corkirans are able to fend off a attempt at conquest by Corinth. The Corinthians, of course, see this as an act of war by Athens' part, uh, and a direct provocation, uh, and it has, uh, because uh, Cor Corkira is so important to them in terms of the their uh, uh, their commercial location and the uh, the exploitation of trade routes in the Adriatic and Magna Graeci and so forth. Uh, this is uh, this is particularly sticks in the craw of the Corinthians. Uh, uh, as the relationship with Corinth deteriorates deteriorates rapidly, uh, uh, Athens suddenly realizes that they have a an ally, a member of the Delian League, that is. A Corinthian colony and a much more normal Corinthian colony in that Potidae has a perfectly normal warm relationship with his mother city and so as an Athenian ally this is now a, uh, a chink in its armor this is now a potential uh, you know vulnerability uh, and so the the Athenians uh, turn to Potidaea and issue an ultimatum that they have to tear down their walls and break their relationship with Corinth. Uh, and here's where we need to remember that each polis, uh, including the uh, the colonies, which are you know new polis foundations, are supposed to be independent, uh, and uh, and no uh, independent you know state in any period of history would uh, willingly tear down its own walls. And uh, and submit to uh, you know this kind of treatment, uh, willingly make itself vulnerable uh, in this kind of situation, willingly surrender its sovereignty, and so the Potidaeans refuse the ultimatum. Uh, their alliance, their friendship with Athens, uh, doesn't extend to this. So Athens uh, besieges Potidaea, and. Uh, and undertakes a military operation to reduce Potidaea into direct Athenian control in order to eliminate this potential uh, uh, this potential threat. Uh, once again, Corinth takes this as uh, an, an act of of, of uh, outrageous aggression uh, on Athens's part against uh, an independent polis that is also a, a colony under Corinth's protection. And so, once again, Corinth is provoked. And then we have the final provocation of the Megara decrees. Once again, Megara comes into play. Uh, Megara is now, once again, an ally of the, uh, of the Peloponnesians. And so, the, uh, uh, with, uh, with uh, relations going from bad to worse, Worse with uh, Corinth and uh, Sparta, uh, 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 you know, uh, Athens is on high alert, and uh, they see the, a potential problem with Megara. They accuse Megara of uh, of, uh, of 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 uh, 
of coming over the border and uh, misusing uh, sacred land that uh, falls within Attica. Uh, and uh, what, uh, what really matters here is not the accusation, but the result, which is to accuse, which is to deny Megara access to the markets at Athens, to the Agora, and to uh, the markets at all of Athens' allies. And this is uh, the vast majority of the places where Megara is trading, and this means the uh, Megara economy uh, goes down the hole, and uh, propaganda rapidly starts to spread that uh, the result of the Megara decrees is the that the Megarans are going to starve, and uh, and stories start to pass around that uh, uh, that uh, the Megarans uh, uh, rapidly begin to suffer under this uh, treatment by Attica. Uh, it's very difficult to get a handle on the extent to which this is actually true as opposed to being propaganda, but once again, this is the breaking point. This is the, the straw that, um, that, uh, that makes Corinth turn to uh, its ally Sparta and demand that there be uh, war, that Athens must be stopped, that Athens is, is, is uh, riding roughshod over the independence of the Greek communities, that it is mistreating its allies, uh, that uh, it it has to be stopped from its uh, uh, its its corruption of of the of the Greek world uh, and its its efforts to become uh, the the you know an imperial ruler over the Greeks. The Corinthians demand that the Athenians be stopped. Uh, the series of provocations to Corinthian trade, but the Spartans ultimately agree. Uh, they were reluctant to join Corinth in the undeclared war, but now uh, they see uh, where Corinth sees a commercial threat. Sparta in Athens sees a cultural threat uh, to the integrity of, of Hellas itself. And so they are willing to go to war against Athens to stop Athens from Athens' culture from taking over uh, and dominating the entire Greek world. And this brings us into the actual Peloponnesian War, uh, and we'll see how that goes uh, as we proceed. For now, that's that. Points, the, uh, the Greek world is divided. Us and them, uh, there's only two possibilities to turn to for help. One is Sparta, and the other is Athens. And uh, Sparta won't help because Sparta is is uh, closely allied with Corinth. And so Corcyra, having no other options, forges a alliance with Athens. Athens isn't particularly happy about it either, but uh, but uh, in this case, they agree to the alliance and eventually end up sending a fleet of ships to the naval battle with Corcyra, uh, in which the Corcyrans are able to fend off a attempt at conquest by Corinth, the Corinthians, of course, see this as an act of war by Athens' part uh, and a direct provocation. Uh, and it has, uh, because uh, Cor Corcyra is so important to them in terms of the, their, uh, uh, their commercial location and the, uh, the exploitation of trade routes in the Adriatic and Magna Graeci and so forth, uh, this, is, uh, this is particularly sticks in the craw of the Corinthians. Uh, uh, as the uh, relationship with Corinth deteriorates, deteriorates rapidly, uh, uh, Athens suddenly realizes that they have a, a, an ally, a member of the Delian League, that is a Corinthian colony, and a much more normal Corinthian colony in that Potidae has a perfectly normal, warm relationship with its mother city. And so as an Athenian ally, this is now... A, uh, a chink in its armor. This is now a potential, uh, you know, vulnerability. Uh, and so the, the Athenians uh, turn to Potidaea and issue an ultimatum that they have to tear down their walls and break their relationship with Corinth. Uh, and here's where we need to remember that each polis, uh, including the, uh, the colonies, which are, you know, new polis foundations, are supposed to be independent, uh, and uh, and no uh, independent, you know, state in any period of history would uh, willingly tear down its own walls and uh, and submit 
to uh, you know this kind of treatments uh, willingly make itself vulnerable uh, in this kind of situation willingly surrender its sovereignty and so the Potidaeans refuse the ultimatum uh, their alliance their friendship with Athens uh, doesn't extend to this so Athens uh, besieges Potidaea and uh, and undertakes a military operation to reduce Potidaea into direct Athenian control. The, uh, the founding of the Delian League after the invasion of Xerxes uh, uh, changes the game and, uh, and, and pushes us down the path toward the, the polarization of the Greek world after the Persian invasions, more and more there's a uh, there's a sense that you are either a friend of Athens or a friend of Sparta. And this has to do with the 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 political situation. It has to do with uh, uh, with uh, the the uh, the the radical uh, diametrically opposed ideologies of. Of, uh, of Athens and Sparta. And so we have this long brewing problem, uh, this long term uh, tension that is building up in, 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 the, in the Greek world. And it has a great deal to do with not only the, you know, these opposing pursuits, these opposing ideas of the ideal society that Athens and Sparta have, that ultimately each side thinks is. Is, is a dangerous influence on the rest of the Greek world. But also uh, we have the, uh, the, the increasing identification of Athens with the Demos and Sparta with the Aristoi. And so uh, the Athens and Sparta come to represent the two sides of Greek society that's present in every single, uh, uh, every single polis. Uh, the, the, the tension that, that drives the entire Greek world is the tension that's present uh, in the polis itself from its very origins at the end of the Dark Age. And so uh, this builds to, uh, to, uh, to the point where it bursts out in uh, a series of conflicts, first the undeclared war, uh, and then uh, the interim of the Thirty Years' Peace, and then the Peloponnesian War itself. Uh, and uh, the Peloponnesian War, in turn, uh, takes place in a number of stages. It's divided in half by the, the temporary truce of the Peace of Nicias uh, and uh, the, the uh, escalation of the war through the Athenian uh, efforts to take Sicily. And so uh, the, uh, the, 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 this is a series of, of, of conflicts, a series of, of highs and lows that each stage ratchets up the tension, ratchets up the polarization, uh, further divides the, the Greek world until uh, more and more mental energy is being expended on this. Uh, more and more there's a sense that there needs to be a, uh, a, 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 an explosion to, to resolve this entire Greek world is the tension that's present uh, in the polis itself from its very origins at the end of the Dark Age. And so uh, this builds to, uh, to, uh, to the point where it bursts out in uh, a series of conflicts, first the undeclared war, uh, and then uh, the interim of the Thirty Years' Peace, and then the Peloponnesian War itself. Uh, and uh, the Peloponnesian War, in turn, uh, takes place in a number of stages. It's divided in half by the, the temporary truce of the Peace of Nicias uh, and uh, the, the uh, escalation of the war through the Athenian uh, efforts to take Sicily. And so... Uh, the, uh, the 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 this is a series of, of of conflicts, a series of of highs and lows that each stage ratchets up the tension, ratchets up the polarization, uh, further divides the the Greek world until uh, more and more mental energy is being expended on this. Uh, more and more, there's a sense that there needs to be a uh, a, a an explosion. To, to resolve this in some way, 
and 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 as the Peloponnesian War breaks out, more and more uh, it becomes expected that there is going to be a conflict for who is going to be the hegemon. Uh, the the fact that the, the Greek polis is supposed to be independent and autonomous, and and there isn't supposed to be a, a, an overarching leader. That there isn't supposed to be a a uh, a polis that's stronger and, and dominates all the others. The, the the very idea of the polis is that each one stands shoulder to shoulder, you know, like the hoplites and the phalanx. Uh, there isn't supposed to be a hero in, in the battlefront, uh, and there isn't uh, supposed to be a, a dominant polis. But uh, the the conflict that takes place in the second half of the of the fifth century, and especially the Peloponnesian War itself, is is a is is you know, uh, uh, generations that become conditioned to accepting that this is something that uh, that this is that this rivalry is expected, that this conflict is is understandable, and that uh, that that the the battle for hegemony is is uh, is 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 rational. So. Uh, where does this leave us in terms of, of how these uh, play out? Uh, the undeclared war, uh, you know, essentially ends in a draw. Uh, and the main result is to, um, is to calcify the polarization of the Greek world. The undeclared war produces the, uh, uh, the, the, the full divide, uh, a, a, you know, a facing off of, of superpowers, however you want to think of it. Uh, but uh, the uh, this ensures that uh, the 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 two sides, the Athenian alliance and the Peloponnesian alliance, become more hostile, more dangerous, more violent uh, within their own alliances, and and makes the outbreak of war inevitable. This uh, this thirty years peace is. Uh, doesn't solve anything at all. On the contrary, uh, it, it heightens the tension and, and makes war between uh, Sparta and Athens inevitable. Uh, but here's the thing. So we have this long-term conflict between Sparta and Athens, but all of the flashpoints, all of the actual catalysts for the outbreak of the Peloponnesian War, as with the Undeclared War, uh, have to do with Athenian trade expansion uh, and the, the trade rivalry between Athens and Corinth. And so uh, during the, uh, during the, uh, the, the 30 years, so-called 30 years peace, which remember only lasts for 15 years, uh, the, during the 30 years peace we have uh, a, 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 Athens becoming even more aggressive in, 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 its, in developing a commercial empire uh, in direct uh, provocation of Corinth. Uh, and uh, this takes the form of the establishment of, of uh, a string of new colonies in, in very important commercially strategic places, uh, in particular in the Black Sea and uh, here as we see in the north of the Aegean that gives uh, them direct access to the, uh, the, the rich and vital uh, raw materials, natural resources of Thrace and uh, the, you know, the, the Scythian steppes to the north. Uh, and these new colonies are frequently uh, clerics, which are the special kind of colony that uh, that uh, in which the colony does not become independent but becomes an extension of Athens. Uh, and then we have a succession of, uh, of 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 conflicts that lead us directly into the war. All of them involving Athens, of course, uh, and Corinth. So the first of these involves uh, Corcyra. Corcyra is an important uh, colony of Corinth. It is uh, strategically located for the uh, trade routes of the west in the Adriatic, on the western coast, uh, off the western coast of the, the Greek mainland. Uh, and uh, the Corcyrans uh, are, uh, to a certain extent, unusual in that the way that Corinth has treated them has led them into rebellion and hostility against their own mother city. The, uh, the, the 